Hello, this is Martin Casals, a.k.a. Martin the Moth, and we're drinking at Moe's, and it's going to be fun. <laughs> this is drinking at that Moe's, where we talk about the pros of pro wrestling in the Midwest while sipping on some brews with blessed beers and wrestling. That's my scene, death matches and Lucha Libre, it's all so mean. I'm a straight up smart goofball, not no kiss ass, I stand tall when it comes to wrestling. I'm the king, I know every move, every fling, get ready for a wild time. We're drinking at Moe's, where we don't quit drinking at Moe's, that's where it's at like a power bomb. We hit hard, never fly. Flat, fucking right, we're living the dream Talking about wrestling, oh it's a scream Alright everybody, taking time out before we get this show started That uh, I want to thank Reaper Apparel for having Dranimos be a uh, brand ambassador for their clothing line they got good stuff they got t-shirts they got hoodies they got beans they got lots of great stuff encouraging everybody to break out of their comfort zone live their best self and hey it's something i try to live every day now be sure when you go and you're finishing filling out your order use the code drinking at Mo's get 10% off and the link and the code will both be in the description. Let's fucking go. always wants to be a pain in the butt. But anyways, welcome everybody. Drinking a Mo's Big Mo here. You know the drill by now. YouTube. Like, subscribe, share, comment, hit that damn bell. Helps with that pain in the ass YouTube algorithm. Most places you find audio podcast too today. I'm excited to have with me because me being the huge Lucha Underground fan that I am, I got a guy that was uh, integral in there today. Martin Casas, aka Marty the Moth. How are you doing? I'm doing fantastic. How are you doing? Oh, I can't complain. I cannot complain. I've been, you know, we talked a little bit before we started recording some fun stuff that I've been up to lately. So that, and, you know, this will be out after we make the the big announcement to everybody that doesn't already know. But my wife and I are actually expecting Ooh, very nice, very nice. Congratulations. Thank you. Yep, we're due in January. And, uh, you know, the, the same uh, procedure that uh, Bronson Reed and his wife had to go through with the IVF, same thing. Well, congrats. So, uh, you hope it for a boy or girl. Um, <laughs> we actually already know. All right, you cheated. Okay. We actually already know because we had some testing done because we've had some other difficulties, you know, just to make sure that, you know, whichever embryos they used were like as much that, uh, you know, can go wrong. We like narrow that possibility down and somehow that test can end up telling you what the damn gender is already. All right. Do you have you announced it yet, or no? But by the time this comes out, we will have, and it's a boy. All right. Well, congratulations. Thank you. Yeah. I'm pretty. I'm pretty excited. Maybe you know, once they uh, get to the age where they can know what's going on, maybe I'll end up having my little uh, pro wrestling buddy and get us take him along. You're gonna get him in the ring. I mean, if he wants to, I'm not going to deny it to him. You know? <laughs> now, now, my wife, on the other hand, I, who knows? My mom still hates me wrestling. It's been 20 years now. So. Oh, boy. <laughs> yeah, I know. Um, for me, when it comes to wrestling and even being a fan of it, my wife, it, you know, she tolerates you know it makes me happy and my parents growing up they're like well if he's not getting in trouble 
and he really seems to enjoy it. Nah. Eh. That was their mentality on it. So <laughs> as long as you're not hurting yourself, right? It, pretty much. So first thing I'd like to start off with everybody is what got you started as a fan? And then what got you deciding to make that leap into the business? Uh what started off as a fan was actually my grandpa I used to watch it all the time. I actually, when he passed away, I bought his house, so I'm in it right now. So okay. I'm like 10 feet from where I first saw professional wrestling. Nice. So I walked in, and he was watching it with my uncle, and I don't remember what was happening, but there's a lot of guys beating up one person. I don't know, remember who it was, but I was like, that's messed up. There's like six people beating up this one dude in an arena full of people. Why aren't they helping? Um, <laughs> and then I went on a journey, and then uh, my wife, my my mom uh, listened or watched Jay Leno a whole bunch, and then Hulk Hogan came in and beat and, and beat up Jay Leno on his show. Ah, I'm from Utah, and I'm a Utah jazz guy. So Hulk Hogan came in, and all of a sudden, Carmelo's doing stuff with Hulk mm. Hogan. I'm like, I'm being, I'm being shown multiple ways to go to wrestling. and Take a look at this. What is this wrestling thing? I got to check it out. Oh yeah, nope. I can totally understand you there. I do remember those times with. Uh... Hogan and Leno and, you know, bringing in both Malone and Leno. That that was a wild time. Yeah, yes, 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 it was. Any Anytime I could watch a late night talk show and see Hulk Hogan drop by and just start beating people up, I'm like, oh, wow, okay. I got to start paying attention. Oh, and, yeah. Uh, it was years after that um, where I actually – I joined my high school wrestling group because I thought it was going to be me jumping off top ropes and giving elbow drops. But actually mm -hmm. it was a folk style professional wrestling. Like you see in most high schools, they hand you a headset and you're not bouncing off any ropes. Um, but mm -hmm. I, once I got into college, uh, I went to a WWE show. Somebody handed me a flyer saying, Hey, come to a local school. I'm like, you can do this. Like there's a school here in Utah. They're like, yeah, they come get in the ring. I'm like, <laughs> say less. Yeah, I, I, <laughs> so, so I, I got as soon as I stepped in the ring, I was like, "Well, this is it. This is what I'm gonna do now." Oh yeah, yeah. No, I can, I can bet because I didn't actually get my start watching independent wrestling until I was stationed in the Navy in San Diego, <laughs> and I'm trying to remember, I'm trying to remember because I don't believe Lucha Underground had started yet. But Maybe 2014, yeah, I would have been out of the Navy by then. But you know, seeing some of the people down there, I was like, holy crap! And like, I had heard about you know, independent shows, and actually, one I didn't end up actually going to it was actually little known fact to a lot of people. I actually lived for a short time in Utah, in southern Utah. I worked the 2006 season at Bryce Canyon. Oh, wow. Crazy. Where you at now? I'm in Omaha. Oh, you're a long way from Utah, bro. Yeah, I'm now I'm a long way from there, yeah. <laughs> but, you know, originally I'm from about an hour south of here, so it was like, like I would tell people when getting out of the Navy, I... I don't need to be in the same town as my family, but if I can be closer than having to take an airplane every time I want to go home yeah. for a little bit, that's perfect for me. So here I am. And, <laughs> you know, I actually ran into some people down in San Diego that when I was with the Navy going to shows there, that introduced me. Well, one of them used to run the promotion up here. He has since passed, though. Uh -huh. But then he introduced me to some of the people that are now my friends here, and it's just snowballed from there. It's funny how little decisions to move to certain places or, like, me deciding to go to that wrestling show changes your entire life. Oh, that is true. I was not going to go to that wrestling show when he handed me that flyer. If I wouldn't have gone, I have no idea what life would be like. Oh, you know what? Oddly enough, I have kind of a similar thing with 
ended up eat, where I met my wife was we both have a mutual friend that actually runs one of the other promotions up here. And which one? Uh, PWP Pro Wrestling Phoenix. Okay. And I expect I'll be getting a call soon. I, you know what? I'm definitely, I always trying to pass people along to them. You will definitely be on the list to <laughs> try to get up here because I love getting to see people that I've had on, you know, in person, live at a show. And, you know, hell, somebody that's, you know, been on Lucha Underground and on TV like you, yeah, tall, that would sell some stuff. But what happened was a good friend of mine that wrestles for him ended up saying, you know, he'd been trying to get me to go for like two years and I just never had the same day off as a show. So I'm like, you know what? They got a show on the day I got off. I'll go. Well, coincidentally enough, the next one was, and I hadn't been there maybe 40 minutes, but I noticed this girl and I'm like, man, she's, she's pretty. And then ended up, that friend that convinced me to go was like, he noticed and was just like, here. <laughs> here. And that, was, that was the connection here. <laughs> basically. Basically, I got, I got somebody I want you to meet and just kind of nudged me on over. And now we just passed our fifth year wedding anniversary. Congratulations. With Thank a little you. one on the way, all because and, you went to a wrestling show. And you know what? I laugh about it because my parents used to tell me when I got back, you really think you're going to meet anybody going to those shows? <laughs> and I I literally walked up to my dad the day of the wedding and was like, <laughs> I remember when you told me that. <laughs> and we just had a good laugh about it. So, yeah, those little things just end up some a lot of times leading to some pretty big stuff. I mean, look at me, look at, you know, what going to that one show led up for you. Mm -hmm. Interesting times. Well, something else before I get on too big of a tangent, because Lord knows I can do that from time to time. <laughs> but uh, I like discussing how my guests came up with like their, their in-ring personas because that, you know, I've had people on, you know, fairly early in their careers. And, you know, I've had people on that have been around a while and it always comes out, you know, that first little bit can be a bit of a feeling out process, you know, what's going to stick, what's going to work here. And, you know, how did you come up with yours? Uh, well, the first gimmick guy I ever came up with, I've been wrestling for 20 years now. Um, I, so that just barely passed and that's a crazy, like, holy crap, time flies. Yeah. Uh, but my first character, I, I was bullied as a kid. And, uh, so I kind of just like, at that time I started in 2003. So it was like hookah shells, the hookah shells, bleach blonde tips and like, uh, the cocky, um athlete the thing everybody hated is well at least in my head that everybody hated uh it's what i hated because i i always wanted to be that guy because I, I in my head i was bullied and then that gave me self-confidence issues so this is the guy that i wanted to be da, 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 da. yeah um so that's where i kind of leaned on in for 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 many years actually i was the reflection of perfection the best of sports entertainment the man that men want to be and women want to be with tristan gallo um, it was super fun. It was uh, a, a good filling out process because uh, being in front of people wasn't the first thing that I enjoyed. And uh, it made me a lot more comfortable being on a stage, pretending to be somebody else that like uh, uh, that, that, that I was able to, to live out things I normally wouldn't do um, <laughs> uh, and be a jerk to people that would, that was, mm. and they, they'd be okay with it. In a wrestling show. Um, then I went to Lucha Underground back in twenty in 2014, and they initially made me a magician. Uh, I was going to say, I do remember that you were something a little different at the start, 
than what a lot of people will remember you as from that time period. Yeah, so on 2011, I went to WWE Tough Enough, and I did that one, so everybody knew my real name. So I'm like, millions of people saw me on my real name, and might as well just be me. So then I just started being me for a while, and then Tough Enough came along. They're like, let's do... Okay, they, they gave me a match as me, and then they gave me a match as a magician, and uh, I was going to be walked up with beautiful Brenda, and she was going to be my Vanna White. And uh, we tried that one, and I was supposed to just be the character that made you laugh. And uh, so we tried that. They they figured out, hey, this guy can make people laugh, and this is real good. But I don't know if I'm not sold on that one. And then so we, they did me as a just as my own wrestling character, and it was versus King Cuerno, which now is mm. Mr. Escobar. Ah, uh, yes. A spoiler alert. Sorry, yeah. it's real. Um, yeah. <laughs> uh, but uh, I actually got knocked out, and uh, I. I did a backflip to the outside, hit right in between the pads, and actually ended, I woke up in the hospital. I'm wearing pink spandex. I'm like, what the hell is happening? <laughs> and uh, for insurance reasons, I couldn't wrestle for most of the first season. Like, I would come back the day of, like, Ultima Lucha is when the clearance was good for me to wrestle. So I'm like, well, I just lost an entire season of stuff. Uh, but I, I kept showing up, and uh, they kept – liking me around and uh finally it was uh right before season one was over chris to joseph came up to me uh god bless chris to joseph um good old dj um uncle dj came up to me it's like uh i think we figured it out um your name is marty the moth you're a big kid who's not all there and uh you have aztec pride go and then he walked away i'm like i don't know what any of that means <laughs> And so I'm thinking like a tough, tr strong name. And Marty the Moth, when you just look at the name Marty the Moth, doesn't really instill fear in your eyes. Yeah. When, when there's no context behind it. So um, that's how uh, they came up with that character. And I was originally supposed to be a comedic character. And I was. I love playing the comedic, like the physical comedy character. But also I knew that... Uh, the physical comedy character also doesn't hold very strong as a strong related, like strong, believable heavyweight champion. Yeah. And uh, so we did our first season where I kidnapped sexy star and that's how we introduced that character. And by that time I hadn't wrestled hardly any since I got knocked out um, at Lucha Underground. And then the second season started and I went up to uh vampire. I'm like, here's my concerns. I love being the comedic effect, but I want to be a legitimate champion someday. And uh, how can I make this funny, but also scary enough where this could be, a, I could be a legit, legitimate world heavyweight champion one day. And uh, he's like, well, how sick do you want to go? I'm like, I'm thinking sick. How sick can you go, Vampiro? And that's the right guy to think about when you want to go <laughs> sick. <laughs> oh, totally. Totally, yeah. So I started looking into things like serial killers. Um, I got obsessed with serial killers for a while. Um, uh, horror stuff, horror movies. Like that's where I started dragging people with their mouths and stuff like that. And he's like, run to it. Um, and gave me some, some pointers of, uh, of, of going to horror movies and culture, pop culture to try and find different things to use for my character. And uh, we just played with it. And, and, and one thing about Lucha Underground is fun because of the, backstage stuff that we were able to tell a little bit more stories than just in the ring stuff. Mm. And I, in with the back story of the character I made, I was able to make situations where you could think you see something going on. Like I placed my forehead on my sister. Um, and in the, my head, I have a whole backstory, but on the internet and on TV, people are like, they made their own connections of what that actually meant and how, perverted they were or how like sadistic that that relationship could be and so it's fun to just let people play in their own imagination because they're in their own they're going to be more uh horrified about what they're horrified at uh personally so um it was fun to just like play with that character as much as possible going off of hey this is Marty the moth you're a big kid who's not all there go yeah yeah <laughs> you definitely built something pretty big out of you know basically not a whole lot of information you know you got so 
the basic bullet points and man, you really went went off with that. Not I, I still remember and some of the stuff I'm like, holy crap, this guy's creepy. But then, <laughs> but then some like okay, so I have stated multiple times on different episodes that like I gravitate towards those intense personas and when i go back and i watch lucha underground and i get to where you were doing that stuff i'm like even more so now watching it back i'm like god damn and i just get drawn in I'm like i'm loving it well that makes me very happy i appreciate it very much i think a lot of it is just me having a lot of fun them giving me creative freedom um, with it and with a guy like uh, Vampiro saying mm -hmm. go as sick as you can think of and uh, we start with the basis of the end of season one where me kidnapping a, a sexy star like if that's the basis of how sick can we go let's let's see how far we can go with this oh so yeah it, it, it was a it, it was a blessing and honestly Lucha Underground made my wrestling career a whole nother level so I, I, I love that show I wish Netflix would pick it back up again um, and it'd be seen at least for more eyes than than with the subculture that actually saw it and enjoyed it because those fans are so fast like passionate and mm -hmm. uh and and crazy for the product and and I, that was so so amazing to see the passion for oh, the yeah. fans. Most definitely. And you know, Lucha Underground, for those that might not be as familiar, men, they really had that unique style of you know, I you know, I could be wrong, you know, correct me if I'm wrong, but Lucha Underground definitely seemed, at least to me, to kind of start a lot of that cinematic style going into a wrestling show. Like, you didn't really see stuff like, you know, yeah, they got kind of forced into some of this with the pandemic, but, you know, the Undertaker AJ Styles Boneyard match or some of the some of the Bray Wyatt stuff, which, you know, he really, much like you, definitely had that mind that just almost similar in a lot of ways. The characters with, you know, the the darkness and the horror themes in there. And, you know, I definitely draw parallels to it. And, you know, I'm definitely, you know, thinking back and yeah it didn't really come up until lucha underground and like right. they definitely ended on a little bit of a cliffhanger from what i remember because the, i remember one i think it was the last episode that aired was you know i think the last scene was in a limo and it ended up being uh uh He's now on commentary on SmackDown. Mm -hmm. Was in there. I'm like, well, oh, dang. But now that I think about it, and you brought up uh, Netflix uh, picking it back up, they're already bringing in Raw and you know WWE content. They could really end up being a real powerhouse for wrestling content. You know, they already got the WWE stuff, but bringing in something that a lot of fans remember very fondly in Lucha Underground and, you know, just where that could go from there, getting both on their platform. Hell, you know, they have the different, you know, genres. They could have a whole just damn section of just wrestling stuff. Mm -hmm. And just for me being the wrestling fan that I am, obviously now I, I don't know why I never thought about it, but damn it. Now I'm getting excited for that. That would be <laughs> freaking awesome. It was, it was on Netflix for a while. And I, uh, I do remember that. Yeah. Yeah. And then we had season, I think, I think we had four seasons, I believe. And yeah, I think we had season one through three on there. And season four is when I actually had like my championship brain. So I was like, Oh man, come on. You left out my season. And uh, and then they took it off, so I was pretty sad. It just it sucks that it's not available on Amazon or something or somewhere where someone mm -hmm. could casually find it. I do think I'm trying to remember. I do have downloaded. Uh, I don't know on um 
Amazon, or it might have been on Amazon, but I have some of the seasons downloaded. I think I might have all of them. It was either Amazon or Apple that I, I got them on. And, oh, man, great memories watching that stuff. And just looking at where a lot of the talent that has been on the show or where they're at now and good lord from you know actually one of the unique match types that i remember from lucha underground came up you know with uh and you were in one weapons of mass destruction with now swerve and look at all the stuff that he's been doing i've been you know thankful to get to meet him one time and it's it bring you know I bring it up. I shouldn't say is, but I bring it up that it's kind of funny how sometimes some of the people that can play those uh, characters that are just some sadistic sons of bitches, you know, behind the camera, you know, when I like when I got to meet Swerve, one of the nicest dudes ever. Hundred percent. Like I remember it was that revolver, and you know, walking back to my car and a ways back, I'm like okay, there's somebody filming a promo out here in the parking lot. I get closer. I'm like, holy shit, that's Swerve. So, like, I have my figure that I had to have him sign that night, and I'm like, oh, my God. Uh, I'll just stand here and, you know, wait till he's done. But, yeah, one of the nicest dudes ever. And there's been a few people that have gone on from there. And actually – me being, you know, the fan that I am of the product, I've had a handful on adding you now. The last one, I think, was actually Famous B. Oh, yes. Love me some Famous B. How can you not, how can you not love Famous B? And oh, sort of both. The, the cast on that Lucha Underground roster was ridiculous. Oh, uh, totally. Not only in the amount of talent that was already there and proven with Ray Mysterio, uh, John Hennigan, uh, Taya, like uh, already proven talent, but with, you, you could tell with Dante Fox and Swerve and uh, uh, that uh, Havoc, what, what like Matt, his name's Matt. Um, it was, uh, is it, yeah. that the talent there was just off the charts on another level. And I was, oh, yeah, three o'clock room like that. Oh, yeah, guys, like you know, another couple that I think of off the top of my head, Brian Cage, Cage, Matt monster Christ. stuff there. Um, one of my first signed figures, Jeff Cobb, you know, behind the monster Matanza and just the talent. You know, you hear about people talking about, you know, oh, the the talent from the former talent from like Ring of Honor. They're like all over. And, you know, very much the same for Lucha Underground. I mean, you just look everywhere lots of people are at. New Japan, Ring of Honor, AEW, TNA, WWE. They're all over the place. Mm-hmm. And... The, the other match that I think a lot of people look forward to, I know at least I did, the Aztec Warfare. Nice. That, I always love that one. Oh, man. That was some something fun to watch, and especially in the atmosphere of the Lucha Underground Temple. That was, like, just nuts. <laughs> it was good to get my hands on everybody because uh... – they're usually running a storyline with a particular person and not being able to touch everybody. But the locker room was so amazing. I just wanted a piece of everybody. So um, I, I loved, I love those kind of opportunities. And then it was great to be able to, I think Joey Ryan like handcuffed himself. It was great to put like different character stories into stuff where like, how would this person be in this situation? Mm-hmm. Um uh yeah the weapons of mass destruction uh weapons of mass destruction match is one of my favorite matches of my career and swerve i it does not surprise me to see him on the top of professional wrestling right now oh yeah i i remember being such a huge fan of his you know as kill shot and then you know when he went to wwe i'm like ooh, things are really gonna catch on and then, you know, everything happened the way it does sometimes. 
But then, man, when it was like AEW just seemed to really know when to really just light that fire underneath him. And then once he really got going from that, it boom. <laughs> Stuff that people that have watched him for a while already that already knew what he was capable of, even more people were getting to see that. And it was just awesome. Yeah, he, the swerve, oh, I knew was always amazing. He just needed a chance for the world to see it. And, totally. and I think that was a mass attraction match was like maybe one of the first chapters of people seeing it. And I think there's way more chapters for of swerve to come. Oh, yeah. No, he's, he's nowhere near done yet. Totally. Now, I'd like to ask, you know, those that have been on Lucha Underground, every, lots of people have heard different stories about how stuff kind of ended there. If you're okay with it, what was it like seeing it from your perspective, how things just kind of fizzled out for, I guess, the lack of a better way to put it, because it wasn't for a lack of popularity, I can tell you that. It was, uh, I think, just a, a lack of the, whoever want, wanted to fund it. Um, it just finding, the th here's the thing is, as the final episode was going, I was bleeding out of my face profusely. And I was like, so dude, we did not like, yeah, I think we actually got, like, I think we have got everything signed. We're, go we're going to have season five. I'm like, hell yeah. And, uh, and then we just never got called back. So <laughs> um, apparently it, um, people were, we're excited at the end of the show. And then when it finally came to, Hey, let's start doing season five. It, the people with the funding didn't want to do the funding. Um, and then which sucks. Cause we had contracts where we really couldn't do anything else on TV, mm. which is where people make their money in professional wrestling. True. And if I can't go and make a living, that makes it very hard, especially if we're not shooting anything for, it was a while, cause several years before we were able to get out of stuff. Yeah, so, I, I do remember hearing a lot about that. Um, so uh, several more it affected more people than some uh, some people more than uh, others, but it was it was a contract that at the time and 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 currently that contract still changed my career. Um, at the same time, I couldn't do anything while I was on it, and Lucha Underground wasn't doing anything too to say, hey, sweet, this is awesome. <laughs> so um, uh, I, 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 I've learned to start reading contracts better. <laughs> so that's a good thing. <laughs> you, you, we yeah. all learn to be to be better or to get uh, business uh, agents or someone we trust to read the fine print. Mm. Um, but from what, what I understood is, hey, yes, this is, we found, we have funding for season five. We're all ready to go. We're jacked. We want to start this real soon. And then uh, just never, never got a call back because that's how it usually was. After a season, we take some time off and we'd go back and for a couple months. So, I do remember. Yeah, it wasn't your typical wrestling show where it was like one season right into another. There was that little bit of a wait in between. So yeah, that's where you know I know from a fan's perspective, looking on and you know always being you know, anticipating the new season and hearing the little rumblings, much like you said about, you know, the new season's coming, it's going to be awesome. And then, you know, the last episode of the last season kind of ended up just ending on a cliffhanger. Yeah. And Which with was... the mind of uh, Krista Joseph and the writing staff there, who, who knows what it was going to be God versus humans and it was going to be uh, it, who knows what it could have ended up to be so I would have loved to know how that story was planning on it going to end and then of course with wrestling it always changes so yeah. you never quite know what it would have been um, so uh, true but uh, it, it, I, I hope that someday it will be seen on so like an Amazon or a Netflix more where someone could see it a casual person could come see it more because it was an amazing time and that level of roster and that production crew that was there, mm -hmm. uh, the filmmaking side, that putting that crew together, there was nothing but magic. So, most definitely, and 
you know, it kind of, you guys with uh, Lucha Underground actually also towards, uh, well, basically right at the end there, having some kind of, you know, we see collaborations between like, you know, NXT and um, uh, TNA right now. And there's been, you know, the stuff that AEW has done with different promotions. Uh, Lucha Underground kind of had that same thing for at least a few shows for uh, with it was Impact at the time. And some of the, the they were some pretty good shows, I believe. Most of it was under their uh, United We Stand shows. That, mm, okay, over like the WrestleMania weekends. Yeah, the WrestleMania weekends. Yeah, I think they most of the time happened there, and you know, definitely got more people's eyes on you know the people that came from Lucha Underground that you know maybe didn't pay attention or were living under a rock or something. <laughs> because I don't know it, I knew as soon as I heard about it I'm like in that first episode it was just so unique and with uh, professional wrestling regardless of independence or you know national TV level uniqueness is kind of few and far between so when you have something like what Lucha Underground was able to put together that's that was very special. And you know what? I hear, I don't know if it's already happened by the time of this recording, but I believe it was the Lucha Brothers were actually going to be putting on a show at the Lucha Underground Temple or somewhere very close by there. Um, I heard that too. That was supposed to be the beginning of this month. Um, I think they put on a show at their Lucha Republic. Uh, ah. They have a store out there. Um, I would, and so I don't, I think the actual temple is tore down. Like it was leaking our last weekend of taping. It was raining or, or, or one of the last weekends it was raining. I remember that raining inside because like the building was like a condemned building. And oh. like, that was real. That was a condemned building. And it was like raining inside the makeup room. And it was kind of funny. So I think hmm. that building is actually tore down now at this point. Oh boy. So, yeah. I guess I didn't realize that one. Yeah, it was supposedly the the set of Saw as well, the original Saw where the guy got his foot. That would make sense. For some weird reason, that would make sense. Just remembering, you know, the the setting. And it's like, okay, I see if you you decorate it right. I'm, I'm seeing how something like Saw could be filmed in there. Yeah, that's where like me and John showered. Uh, that's where a bunch of the guys showered. Like, uh, but then they took go out of the bathtub and stuff. It was cool, um, but there's no hot water in there. <laughs> uh, but it, it was cool to be like, oh yeah, I remember that movie. And then just the amazing staff that we had. That like, we had a weight room in there that was all brand new weights and everything, state of the art, etc. And but just to make to get the look of the thing, they made them look like they're beat up and old and and rusty and it was amazing because they <laughs> definitely weren't but for for the shots they did some shots inside the uh some scenes inside the weight room and uh they, it looked beat up and razzled but it was all amazing so the magic of tv and yeah. wrestling i believe is all storytelling that's what oh, yeah. that's what it is is it's all storytelling it's just we're the only professional wrestling company to bring time travel and actual killing people into profession mm. we cut off lucha source's head i believe well yeah or somebody's head i we cut off some, head. Some, yeah somebody's and obviously he's know, still I, alive and doing great so <laughs> yes yes now going by uh what was it lucha source i believe he's i know he's teaming with uh christian cage i'm wanting to say kill switch that's what they're calling him now ah yes I was trying to, I'm like, no, it's not kill shot. That was swerve. <laughs> but, uh, you know, besides, you know, Lucha Underground, you have been out there with the independent six, actually with uh, some promotions that I've been lucky enough to have some people on from there. I know IZW with the, mm -hmm. I know I've had Chewy Gonzalez on and, you know, 
I'm inching close to 300 episodes, so I feel nice, bad man. for whoever from there ends up listening to this. If I've forgotten you, sorry, I know that we've talked. <laughs> Dang. Three, near 300 episodes plus almost, I turned 41 in a couple of weeks, so sometimes right. my wife loves to joke about me being old, and we, well, maybe that's my old age showing, but... <laughs> Age is but a number. Different that problems. is true. That is true. But you know, you even had a title shot there. What What has your experience been like with the uh, IZW? IZW is great. Um, my friend Michelle and Steve run it uh, over there, so I've been wanting to get there for years. Um, it was a sold out house, um, standing room only. We still sold out all all the places to stand. So um, then we had a autograph signing uh, at 3D Sports, uh, which was great. We sold we sold there more than anything that they sold um, as far as the autograph signings for the wrestlers. So that was fantastic. Um, and I just, there's a bunch of the wrestlers there. Like, it, it's crazy when you travel enough, there's just a bunch of the wrestlers that, like, you see in different s- towns and states and I see most of the guys that I saw in ICW Arizona over at Rocky Mountain Pro and over in Denver. Mm-hmm. I'm over in Denver uh, uh, with D'Lo Brown and Vince Russo every month. So, oh yeah, um, it, it it it's fun to be able to see people doing this, going on the same journey as you, um, but living in different states and we see each other on the road in different states. And it's it's pretty fun. That I I can imagine. You know, speaking of Rocky Mountain Pro. I've had a few people on that have gone through their doors. I know I was uh, Bruce Wayans. I've had him. We I've had a good. Things. Oh yeah, we had a good chat right before Mania when you know the Rock was calling himself the final boss, and we had a we had a good little chat on that. That was fun, actually. That was pretty damn fun. But uh, <laughs> it, everything it sound... Bruce Wayans is fun and a good time. So. Oh yeah. And it was funny because I didn't realize we actually have a little bit of a connection because he actually, at least for a time, actually lived in Lincoln, Nebraska, which is just about not all that far from me. And I actually work in that town now. So it's like, and he asked me about this chicken place and I'm like, yeah, I actually drive by there every day on my way to work. So it was like, well, next time I'm down there, we're going to have to go. I'm like, hey, fine by me. Yeah, anytime hanging out with Bruce Wayans is a good time. So I highly recommend if you get a chance. And if you guys don't follow Bruce Wayans, go follow Bruce Wayans on everything. Sure. Because he's amazing. He's taking over Colorado. And you're going to see him on your screen soon. Oh, yes. he <laughs> He definitely has one of those entertaining personalities that would just you know people could really just latch on to because it's such a a fun personality that he has yeah and it's 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 just real personality uh, mm, how totally the best characters are their their own character turned up to level 10 and mm-hmm. is turned up to 11 or 12 and yeah, that's it's just his normal stuff, and the way they got the Chop City with him and Atiba right now, that it's a money maker, and it's right in front of D'Lo. Vince Russo's writing for it now, so you're going to see some fun TV. Uh, so everyone to go, Betty, go check out Rocky Mountain Pro. Clip that, send mm. that, do it. Oh, uh, definitely. Now, I like to always try to talk with some guests about some stuff outside of wrestling that they're involved with and i've seen a lot of you know videos and pictures of you cosplaying and i'm like okay because you know there's a comic convention that's going to be coming to just across the river from me well i believe it's as of recording this weekend and it's interesting going to those things and seeing like how detailed a lot of these costumes can get you know what kind of drew you into you know because people look put a lot of effort into these costumes and stuff that they put together for these things yeah absolutely um i actually have a friend who runs a fantasy ball company 
called Aluxia Events. So everybody go follow that. Aluxia Events runs Fantasy Balls. The next one is a dragon, uh, something of the dragon, um, based off of another book. And what happened is they were doing one for A Court of Thorns and Roses, this book series, and uh, they needed a bad guy. And they're like, well, we don't know anyone that's good at, good at playing the bad guys, but we know Martin plays a bad guy in wrestling. So let's call him. And uh, that's actually what got me there. I didn't had not read any of the books before or anything until by the time I got there, I'd, I'd, I'd listened to as many of the books as, as I could. Um, so I at least knew the character of what, what it was because I wanted to yeah. – do the character right you want i always want to do the best i can to do whatever i do as most people should be oh yeah uh, and uh it was a crazy time because we i was part of helping setting everything up because i was it's my friend and uh but also i was part of the cast and there's people who do this like for a living just dressing up as somebody and playing characters and it, it was really fun um it's it was weird not to pack wrestling boots <laughs> um, but also at the same time, it was kind of the exact same thing. I'm playing a character and I just, I, it's from a book instead of me in a spandex kicking somebody in the face. And it, it was really fun. The girls, it is a very different market um, as far as target demographic for, mm. for, for wrestling fans versus romance novels. Um, and uh, it it was fun to play with that dynamic. I ended up doing a, a strip, a strip dance in front of 600 plus people that was supposed to be a 30 second strip dance in front in the corner where no one could see just to make one person happy. And it turned out to make, to be a whole story. That's all on the internet. So <laughs> I'm one dance. I was doing some strip dances on TikTok. That I've often joked about, about, uh, you know, I, I could be a male stripper. I tried it once, but they paid <laughs> me to, put my clothes back on and never come back. Hey, as long as there's money coming, brother, you, you yeah, got sure. to do it for your family. Do it for your family. Well, true. Strip or don't strip for your family. Definitely. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know if I could ever legit do that because, good Lord. Well, obviously, I'm a bit of a nut. People pay to see that. Are you kidding me? There's a niche for everything, my friend. Uh, you, you know what? The, that is something that I do remember hearing. <laughs> my feet, I, I have been an athlete my entire life. My feet are nasty looking, and there's a niche for that. You can make yeah, that, money, pictures of your nasty ass feet. So uh, there's a niche for, a, 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 I think they call you a bear or something, like a big hairy man. Like, like there's a niche for everything, my friends. Don't worry. That, yeah. <laughs> All right, before <laughs> before I get laughing too hard to where I can't continue. Come on, we just got a new career for it. That's all. We just gonna put more food on your table, more money in your wallet. That's all we trying to do. Yes, I like the thinking. So I have two categories. One's a bit of a name game where I name off some people. Get you give me quick thoughts on them, and I try to theme it towards the guests as much as possible. Okay. And with you. Oh, there's a, you know, we talked about, you know, the platforms that, you know, a lot of people have gone on to from Lucha Underground. You have history with a lot of different people. And, you know, I figured we'd name off a few. Okay, sounds great. First one, Penta. I'm just supposed to say a little blurb about him or whatever? A little, little blurb about him, yeah. Love him, first off. That's probably how most of this is going to go, is I, I pretty much love everybody. <laughs> um, uh, really hard hitters, his chops suck at taking. Like, uh, they sound beautiful, though. Yeah. Um, and is pretty good at handball. Ah. So. All right. A talent that I didn't know that he had. <laughs> All right. <laughs> Try to find yeah. things that maybe people wouldn't know. No, yeah. Hell, I, you know, showed, we talked about some of my collection before. I actually, speaking of the guy, I have his. Oh, actually. One of the best, prof oh, and, and, and did I forget one of the best professional wrestlers in the world? Mm. Oh, nice. I love that. I 
don't, I'm not a big picture guy. I always like was told it was bad to take pictures um, about stuff. But then I started remembering, like looking through my career, I'm like, I should start at least having a memorabilia or stuff. Cause I'm not going to wrestle forever. Um, yeah. I should have something to remember this time. So I started collecting some of the stuff from my Lucha Underground. And uh, so he, he was nice enough to, after, to give me one of his masks after I bled all over it and uh, started collecting some of the stuff. So I don't. Nice. It, a lot of the stuff I have here around here, there's just like wrestling mask and. Oh, mm. and the underground titles over there. Um, if you want. Nice. Hey, hey, hey. Wife. We grabbed that title. You want to see a, a friend of mine, the one that co-host the my two cents stuff with me nate he actually made a title as a thank you for you know bringing him on and now i actually have it because i got caught up with you know traffic and work that i didn't get to completely set up everything so i actually have the title kind of propping up my <laughs> what i record uh-huh. with right but I'll I'll show it to you before we nice. we uh, go off tonight. I'm I'm pleased with it. I brought it to pretty much every wrestling show I've gone to since, and I've gotten a lot of nice compliments, including from one of my current favorites, Steve Macklin. Mm. I actually did a short video with him to you know kind of hype up the channel after the last uh revolver show nice but that and you know when you think about like some of the classic titles lucha underground's one especially that one that they had for like the vast majority of the time you know the one they ended with that one was a beautiful title I agree. I think it's one of my favorite. Well, I'm biased because I held it, but um, yeah, I actually do think it was one of the the the, the best looking titles because I like the golden look of like the old WCW belt. Mm, yes, like, and it, uh, that WCW belt, this Lucha Underground belt, looked similar to that with its own Lucha flavor. Like, I, it's it's over on my wall over there. I started collecting stuff, and so I got like the Gift to the Gods title over there. I got the Ooh. Lucha Underground title. Uh, my nice. streaming community made me a, a House of Casaus title, so I got nice. that in there. Um, and then I actually have the title for like my local wrestling company where I first started. So it's like fun seeing the progression of my career on my wall. Nice, yeah. I'm <laughs> debating with that one that got made. You know how a lot of people have those like snap on like for the 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 you can attach to the wall that you know you can just hang them like that i don't know what the technical wording is words are hard right now but i'm wanting to get it displayed like that and you know trying to as much as possible people get that i've had on you know actually having them sign it so like i just have that little memorabilia for you know i mean the show ain't gonna last forever so you know something that whenever it does come to an end i have something pretty cool to look back on it with right dude thumbtacks works just as good like literal plain old thumbtacks i just take one of each one and i put the pins on on them and they're holding and been holding for months so huh. uh, less than a dollar thumbtacks and it's been holding up all four of those belts i'll have to i'll have to look into that all right, so next person here. Okay, I cannot do the way the announcer Samantha Irvin announces this next person's name justice, but I'm I'm gonna try. Chelsea Green. <laughs> I love when she did that. By the way, um, <laughs> I love Chelsea. Um, I was so blessed to be able to work with her when she came to Lucha. Um, she came in and I remember Ty is like, Hey, should I, I, I should just ask Like, she's in town. Should I just ask if she can get a match or something? I'm like, heck yeah, man. Like, see what happens. Worst they can say is no, shoot your shot. Like just ask. And yeah. knew who she was. And right at that time she was running a, the, the, her TNA, uh, crazy bride gimmick that she had. Mm. And, 
And uh, she came in and she's like, I'm down to do whatever. Let's do something fun. And then I threw about a whole bunch of like crazy, crazy ideas. And she's like, let's do this and topped it. And she was so fun to work with. And I, it does not surprise me to see the success she's having right now. And it looks like she's being herself and having a blast doing it. Oh, that you, that is one thing I was definitely wanting to talk about with at least somebody is, you know, you can tell when the, somebody that you know in the ring when they're like legit just having a blast mm. and very much evident with her right now that she is just loving every minute of it it's what originally got me excited about being a wrestler when i watched Shawn michaels in the 90s is he legit looked like he was just having a grand old time with everybody and i'm like i want a job that i enjoy and here we are. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Next one. You know, most people might remember him by a different name. He went by Jeremiah Crane in Lucha Underground, but people might know him a little better as Sammy Callahan. I loved him. Uh, we went to the Magic House together in California. Uh, that's where I think he was essentially my prom date. Um, I was Little Spoon. Uh, Sam McCallan is one of the coolest guys uh, around. He's got a mind for this wrestling business that many don't. So if you guys have a chance to pick his brain, do it. Um, and he's kind of pretty badass. So <laughs> I have nothing for love, but for like all of these guys that you're mentioning. Like <laughs> oh, yeah. I've been a huge fan of his. And I, you know, I've had people from revolver on i you know wanted to have sammy on but good lord knowing his schedule that might be a little hard to get done but hell it took me damn little over a year to get uh john wayne murdoch on but i did it there you go shoot your shot i'm i can be i can be one per persistent son of a gun if i want to be <laughs> there you go squeaky wheel gets the grease most definitely. All right. Last but not least for this one, one of uh, you know, one of my top favorites from you know, growing up, you know, Don't worry about it, behind Stone Cold Steve Austin, but <laughs> they they got a little something in common. You know, both coming from as they call it the land of the extreme, but talking about the innovator of violence, Tommy Dreamer great dude I've, I've met him so many times since lucha um he's also enjoying everything that he's doing at this time so and it, it's great to see someone who's kind of brought in an era of professional wrestling with ecw um and then is still having a good time with it and hmm. uh he's always smiling every time i see him so none for love but for a good old time dream oh yeah and you know you, you hear about it from different people you know, they they might have been having fun at first, but then you know, as they go on, you know, whatever it was that made it so they were having fun, kind of just I guess for the lack of a better way to put it, fades away. Like something mm -hmm. just doesn't make it that fun for them anymore. So it is nice to see people having the longevity of a career that he has had still having fun with it right yes um because i the way i figured is wrestling is a very hard career to be in i um, mean it's not nice to you at the same time most careers aren't so it's just pick your heart and what you're doing to to deal willing to deal with in order to get what you want out of life and uh he's been enjoying the crap out of his life it seems like for many years most definitely all right, now I got some random questions. Some might be wrestling related, some might not be. Some might have absolutely nothing to do with anything we've talked about. <laughs> okay, I I have so much going on right now, so it, bring it on an open book, man. All right, this one is one that I generally lead off with because I can assure you I have heard some entertaining stories behind this question. Craziest in match moment for you? 
Let's see. Uh, one that sticks out, and I get—I don't know what what we were thinking, but I decided one time to throw a uh, pentagon through a through a pane of glass, Ooh. and uh, it didn't turn out the way I wanted. So he reversed it and threw me through it, and I bled all over the place in the last episode of Each Other Gun. I saw ah. it when I put my good hand in the ground. to like stop myself from hitting the wall and like there's still a scar from I just pulling myself out I'm like what am I doing with life but the crowd was going insane <laughs> but I'm pulling stuff out of my hand with like my hand was scanned and crushed up and, and oh, I was no. like I'm having so much fun but what am I doing with life <laughs> I'm this boy's blood mm -hmm. I can't see um I, I don't know if that's measure the craziest um in my head because I know I've done some stupid stuff or like There's been some funny stuff, but one of those that was one of the times where I'm just like, I love this. This is so weird. I'm bleeding all over the face. People are cheering to make me bleed more. And uh I dig it. <laughs> it, was, it was fun. So uh that was probably one of them going through a plain glass from the last episode of Lucha Underground. I think I just showed it on my Instagram just now a little bit, actually. Uh, you know what? I think I do remember seeing I remember seeing it somewhere. I For the life of me, can't remember where right now because Lord knows I've been busy <laughs> lately. <laughs> yes. Um, an another craziest time that like just for my own self-doubt was just like my first time ever wrestling in in in, in Mexico. Ah. Was with 28,000 people in in the arena. It was this uh packed crowd. And I'm in the ring with uh Ray Horace, Ray Mysterio, Ricochet, Jeff Cobb. Um, Marty, one of the referees, and it was just like, this is cool. This is yeah. crazy. I never would have thought, and that's where I've learned a lot is I should need, need to think ahead of what could be and what 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 we could create because I I never I went through an entire wrestling career of done the amazing experiences that I could pinch myself and be like that's totally actually happened, and. uh I didn't believe I could the entire time. So imagine if we people believed in themselves. Oh like, yeah, the, most, the magic that could happen. Oh, most definitely. Hell, even with the podcast with some of the people that I've been lucky enough to have on. Like, I remember when I first started, I was you know interviewing friends you know in the business local of me, but then I'm like, I'm gonna run out of people sooner or later, and then. I just got this idea from a tag team actually liking a tweet of mine. I'm like, I'm gonna, I'm gonna reach out here, and you know, ended up having them on the SATs, the guys that literally invented the Spanish fly. They were one of my like my first like big names that I had on, and this was right around the time they had the series of matches with, um. the Briscoes and the Hardys and their those matches were just going viral as hell. And then I saw that and reached out to him. I'm like, I remember thinking, eh, this might be a long shot, but here. Yep. I'm like, you know what? I know that I can do a good job, but I just need that little um oh as you know for a different purpose. Joker in one of the, I think it was one of the Dark Knight movies, like I just need a little push. And that was getting them on was that little push for me. And yeah, got it up so then. Oh yeah, good how it works out. All right. But yeah, I've had, you know, been lucky enough with some of the guests I've had on getting to hear some of the stories behind some of these crazy moments they've had like oh lloyd and hawaii telling me about him and new jack going through a wall oh, man. and paul Heyman yelling at them after the match i've been lucky enough to see a few crazy moments like you've heard of the second gear crew literally any of their matches just 
I, I've joked with them in person that their matches might as well be sponsored by Home Depot. Uh, and this last one show that I saw them at, Cage of Horrors for Revolver, literally the whole match was just crazy moments. Fire was involved twice. Oh, man. It was nuts. <laughs> See, you could do anything within wrestling. I love it. You have clowns popping out. You can light people on fire. You can cut off people's heads. There's time traveling. Wrestling is just an art form. Oh, most definitely. And my favorite one, to be quite honest. <laughs> All right, <laughs> next one. My wife and I actually have both. But, you know, some people lean more one way or the other. Do you consider yourself more of a dog or a cat person? 100% dog. I'm a sucker for dogs. I have four puppies. In fact, the beginning of this uh, podcast, you might just hear <sighs> for like the yeah. first like two minutes because I was petting my dog right here and mm. he was breathing. So it was going right into the microphone. So you might hear that. That's not me. That's my dog. <laughs> <laughs> That's all good. Sometimes my my wife and I, we have an uh, English bulldog and, you know, more often than not, I'll leave the door to come down here where i record open that way if he wants to come down he can and well don't look like that's happening tonight but you know every now and then it happens and i i love him to bits but my wife and i do actually have three cats too Ooh. one of them like i don't mind cats you know there it's i'm more of a dog person myself but one of our cats just seems to love the hell out of me. Like, I'll be laying down and he'll literally try to use my beard as a pillow. <laughs> Crazy yeah, my dog. Yeah. I have a, two bigger dogs and two 30-pound dogs. And my little uh, Aussie doodle likes to just, like, lay on my face and then just flop around. <laughs> it melts I've... my heart every time because it's adorable, but also that's my face being squished. So. Yeah, nope, I can relate. And also, all right. see, like the 30 pound dogs take up most of the bed, and <laughs> so I cut all my wife from afar. No, yeah, no. Sometimes some of the smaller dogs seem to take up the most room on the damn bed. They just sprawl out, and you're like, how the hell do you take <laughs> up that much room? Agreed. Thor. Yeah, I agree. Uh, they, they, they find the ways to keep you separated. Um, but this weekend I was out on a camping trip and I, I'm like, I'm not feeling a paw in my throat and I'm kind of missing it. So just, mm. just, just, they bring a whole new amount of love into a house. That they do. All right. Now we talked a little bit about, you know, cosplaying <laughs> and, you know, mentioned that, you know, some of the costumes you see out there are pretty damn intricate. Lots of parts to them. What would you say is one of the more intricate ones that you've done? Most intricate what? Uh, with cosplaying. I, this is actually just my first event, to be honest. Oh, yeah? Uh, this was my first event. I, me and my wife love dressing up, um, but we go to comic Con. I guess we go to comic Con oh. to dress up. Uh, yeah. Yeah. Uh, I, we, I spent a bunch of money on a Superman outfit because I love like outfits that look like the movies. See, here's my mm. so here's my my heavy breather. Here's my older boy. Ah, this is my boy <laughs> Brutus. He's a black lad. Um, oh, you gotta love it. But I have a Superman that I spent a lot of money on. Um, that one was really fun. I would love to get like an Iron Man that actually glows and stuff like that. that. Would That'd be really fun. That would be um, pretty sweet. With my friend running these fantasy balls, I feel like there's a lot more cosplaying in my future. The I can imagine me at Comic Cons dressing up as the, oh, the Joker. I think the Joker is probably my favorite. Oh, I love yeah. the Joker. If you can't tell from a Lucha Underground kid character, I stole some inspiration from the character Joker of the character and uh, try to make it my own. And uh, so being the Joker for a day, I think. Oh, yeah. That that is a good one. I I still remember. I went and saw that one Dark Knight movie. Literally the weekend I graduated Navy boot camp, my family was like, "You know what? This is your time. Whatever you want to do." And then I'm like, "Well, 
I kind of want to go see a movie. And it just uh, happened that it had recently come out. And my brother had actually already seen it. So when it gets to the infamous pencil trick spot, yes. he kind of nudges me. is like, dude, you're going to love this part. <laughs> and then it happens. I'm like, holy shit. Yeah. Yeah. Yes. <laughs> oh, Joker's an amazing character. Oh, and, yeah. I, I'm excited for the Superman stuff. I'm I'm a geek. I love superheroes. And so I'm excited for all the Superman stuff coming up. Um, the Boys is a great thing that I haven't mm. got to watch this episode with, so I love superheroes. Um, oh, yeah. My, my wife, not so much. I know I do enjoy it. I don't have so much of, you know, the comic book side of things. I do have some from when I was growing up that you know somehow made it out pretty uh minty although i do admit growing up it was always pro wrestling and ninja turtles for me so like i do have a couple of ninja turtle comic stuff including the first appearance of krang bebop and rocksteady wow so that's a big uh, tv guy so like i loved See, I never got like the comic books and stuff like that, but I, I, I got I, every single toy. I saw the sewer, mm. saw like all four of the turtles. Like, I saw my Power Rangers stuff. Like, mm. I, my mom doesn't like to get rid of things, and uh, so she just has a whole room of stuff. For nice all the toys. <laughs> so no. I can't go there and take it. So, oh um, yeah, no, that that is awesome. I don't have too many of my. You know, and hell, this is kind of going into my next question, talking about hobbies. But uh, Ninja Turtles, I don't have so much of my original stuff from growing up. I do have a few, but like, you know, they did the Universal Monster mashups. Mm -hmm. The first run, I have all but two. Nice. Donnie and, Donnie and Splinter, the only two I don't have. Nice. And I actually have Leo from the second run up there, too. So I got two Leos. Uh, wasn't so much into uh, Power Rangers, but I do have this. Tommy, yes. I, 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 super I, nice. Oh, yeah. Super nice, dude. I actually met him. This was, like, very shortly before the unfortunate events that, you know, he taking his life and all that. But man, it was like a friend of mine just said, Hey, did you hear Jason Deere and Frank's coming to town? You want to go? And I'm like, Oh yeah. So like I went and uh, went and bought that. And you know, my whole thing with a bunch of my autograph stuff is, you know, people talk about, you know, certificates of authenticity. Well, mm. especially with the, uh, with this, I like just, if I can, getting a picture with the person where either they're holding it or I'm holding it. And the one with him, he was literally holding it like, like the Morphin things. Oh, that's cool. And I'm like, dude, that, that, just, <laughs> that was just something. And then I have actually met the voice behind Michelangelo from the original cartoon for Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles and I got a Funko Pop signed by him and I got a Splinter Funko Pop signed by the guy behind Splinter from the first two movies. Nice. Nice. Prized stuff for my collections for sure. All right. Next up with the name of a show like I have, I would feel weird if I didn't have this question. Favorite drink, whether it be alcoholic or non, or one of each, if you want. Uh, I'm gonna go with one of each. And okay. So, um, I like. I was obsessed with Pepsi for a while. Okay. But also, I don't like jiggling on TV. So I actually changed these things called Zevias, which they're like the the sugar inside of it is stevia, and it's essentially water that mm. is, tastes like soda. So okay. I, those are my, my favorite drink. 
Um, I drink them like three or four a day. My wife hates it because she's just continually buying packs after packs after packs. And we need to get a sponsorship from them, Zevia, looking at you. Um, and then, uh, so that fills my soda craving without giving me uh, the jiggles. And uh, whiskey is my favorite mm. uh, drink when we go to the alcoholic version. Um, I, 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 Bought a house and essentially turned my house into a frat. Had a good time with that, and uh, went through the the realms of drinking. And then whiskey is the one that I settled on. That's like a good. I'll just take a nice, neat whiskey on the rocks. Right. Uh, so nice and cool. I've, I'd see there. Uh, there's one called Swear Jar that I've been really liking, or Colin mm. McGregor's whiskey. I, mean, I can't remember what that was called. Something Twenty One or something. A lucky Twenty One, proper Twenty One or something. For, something like that, yeah. Something like that. I don't drink that often, <laughs> but it's yeah. good to have here. And when I do, like just when I oh yeah. Down. So no, uh, yeah, I can but, get you. But whiskey or the Zevias. I got my healthy mm. drink. Got my not so healthy drink. Yeah, my. Much like with the Zevia with you, I am a bit of a Dr. Pepper fiend. And my wife gives me shit about it the same way yours does with you, with the mm -hmm. Zevia. Because she's always telling me that we're always buying Dr. Pepper. And, like, I got a problem. And I tell her, you know what? If I got some, I don't got a problem. <laughs> I feel that very much. I feel that very much. And then, right. oh, yeah. And then with whiskey, I do enjoy whiskey of different varieties. And I've actually stumbled on a combination with whiskey and a certain whiskey and with Dr. Pepper, actually, that was quite tasty. The uh, Dr. Pepper with Jack Honey. Oh, that was a good one. I that, do like that. That was very tasty. And then, you know, I'll take a regular Jack and Coke. But if you put a little grenadine in there, it tasting like a uh, like a Jack and Cherry Coke. It's freaking delicious. <laughs> Sounds. I prefer mixed. I like mixed drinks and and just if I'm just gonna or just straight. Like that's that's <laughs> where I like my drink. Shots. You, you can. I can do a lot of shots, but at the same time, that changes the party. Once the shots versus a relaxed. Oh yeah, most definitely. All right. Last but not least, best advice you have for anybody wanting to get into wrestling? I will answer this the best that the same way I answer the same question I get in my Instagrams about at least every week. Um, it's, a, it's the exact same question. Like, you know, and there was some version of that is how do I get into wrestling? Um, and I always tell everybody, and it's the exact same advice for any industry that you want to get into. Um, find the most reputable school uh, that you're willing to go to. Find the hardest worker there. Out study him and then outwork him. And then that'll be step one. And it's the same in every single field. Mm -hmm. If you want to be a doctor, you find the best doctor in the field. You learn, you emulate what he does and you outwork and you outstudy him. If you want to be a wrestler, it's the exact same thing. Go to a reputable wrestling school with someone who's been there and you can walk in those footsteps with someone who's done it before. So it shortens the trip down. And just outwork and outstudy. And the biggest thing I've seen is people saying, I want to do it. And then they don't show up to practice mm -hmm. or they don't show up to do the workouts or they don't show up. Do what you love, but it's your hunger that will determine how far you go. Most so. definitely. And I was just thinking, as you were saying a lot of that, that it's not as hard to find a good reputable school now as it was like growing up because i know now it's like no matter what region of the country you're in you've got some in your region like out and hell california's got a plethora of them i know uh, one that i'm very familiar with my friends out at socal pro or uh or uh Santino Brothers. There that's the that's one what I was, I was thinking. thinking. Santino's. I, Dustin's got a school. I went to the Nightmare Factory with uh, with the current WWE champ as mm -hmm. the guy running it with QT Marshall. He's the guy that runs AEW. So you've got the current WWE champ and the Q, like the AEW guy, back office guy. 
at Nightmare Factory. Like there's, if you're on the West Coast or the East Coast, there's wrestling schools everywhere. Like every other block. If you're in the middle somewhere, there's one near you. And oh, yeah. if you really want to be a professional wrestler, you're more than likely, like I live in Utah, Nightmare Factory is in Georgia. I went to school in, in, in Utah because there was one here available for me. What I didn't know is the people there were amazing, and but also they had never been to the WWE, been to this stuff. So I didn't know there was other professional wrestling groups outside of Utah. So for five years, I spent uh, at the at practice four or five days a week for the one time I, for one time a year. So find someone who's done what you want and go to that school because they see things differently than someone who I saw it on TV. I saw it on YouTube on how to do it, and we're starting a wrestling suit. So find the most reputable one, but definitely there's a school near you somewhere. Mm-hmm. That is true. All right. Well, that is about all I have. But before we go, where can people find you social media wise? So if they don't already have their eyes on you, they can go ahead and get them there. Well, guys, I'm easy to find Martin Casals on everything. Facebook, Instagram, Twitter, TikTok, Twitch. Everything is at Martin Casals. If you don't know how to spell that, Google Martin the Moth. You'll find me. It's martincasals.com for my merch. My friends from Kill Switch Engage did the last several uh, shirts. Uh, Mike D'Antonio, shout out to you. Love your freaking face. Um, um, I love, I love the that band. Yes, um, I, one of the podcasts I did, uh, it was a podcast like like this, and they're like, "What's your some of your favorite music?" I'm like, "Kill Switch Engage is my one of my favorite bands right now. It'd be so cool if they did my entrance music, and you'd be powerful, but the, the power, be you'd be surprised with the power that your words have, because he just happened to be watching that podcast, all of a sudden, I'm backstage at a Kill Switch Engage concert in Denver, all of a sudden, I'm in California, we're shooting Lunch, Lucha Underground, and Kill Switch Engage is driving over to me to do vocals on a song, and then now we have Kill Switch Un Engage Unleashed, which was supposed to be my song for Lucha Underground, so be conscious of the words that you say, about yourself and the things that you say because it's your words are powerful. Uh, and uh, so find me at Martin Casals, uh, some sweet merch at martincasals.com. I am doing real estate. I have a company that gives uh, people money when they go shopping. I have a million things. I got TV shows, a video game coming out and um, a amazing good things. We'll just say that. Yeah, I'm going well to be on your screen somewhere. And I hope you all see it. I hope you all show support. I hope you all follow Drinking Out Mo's. And you all have a great one. Oh, yeah.